All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, let's go. Oh, well, hello there. Today we are going to talk about my ancestry. I did a DNA test a while ago and I was genuinely curious to see where I'm originally from. So it's an ancestry test where you are sending your DNA to a lab and they are going to examine it for a really long time and they're going to see where you are originally from. They can see the exact percentages of my ethnicity, which place my family is from, etc, etc, etc. They can track it all the way back. It's a test from 23andMe. I'm not sponsoring them or any other product slash service in this video. I personally thought their service was the best and especially as in things that I read online. So that's why I went for them. So I I ordered my DNA kit a while ago and I got this little box a week later. There was a little tube inside of it where I needed to spit in and I needed to fill it all the way up till the specific line. Then close it and send it back to the lab. It took about a month until I got my results back and we are going to look in depth into those results today. However, before we are going to hop in it any further, I would like to give you guys some background information about my family so you guys can get a kind of picture in your head. So let's go all the way back to the 70s. My grandpa came from a small place in Morocco, nearby Casablanca. When he was 18 years old, he decided to stop with school and he decided to go working in Europe, where they needed a lot of people to work at the time. He worked in a number of countries like France and Italy before settling down in the Netherlands. Before he settled, he met my grandmother in Morocco when he was back again. Eventually they got a kid and he flew my grandmother and my aunt over to the Netherlands, where they eventually had a big family. My mother was born just when they started living in the Netherlands, and they had many kids after that, including Noordin in 1990. My grandfather died, unfortunately, when my mother was about 11 years old, and he left a family behind with a total of six children. It's kind of sad because I really would have liked to know him, and about the stories that I heard about him, he was a really kind, honest, hardworking guy. Okay, so fast forward a lot of years later, my mom met this guy, and boom! This kid was born. My parents were not together with each other for long, so... I was born with divided parents. My father is Dutch and I don't know a lot about his family, so I'm quite curious about what the test is going to bring. People tend to think a lot of the times that I'm Southern European. I've heard Italy, Spain, Portugal. I've heard those three a lot of the times, but I think that's to do with the reason that I'm a mixed African slash European boy, although we could find something along the lines of Southern European today. So what do I think I am? I personally think I'm just 50% Dutch, 50% Moroccan. But I think there's some Italian involved maybe? I really don't know. By the way, what do you think I look like? Let me know in the card on the top end of your screen. And while we're at it, I give you guys the opportunity to comment your nationality down below in the comments. It doesn't matter where you're from, be proud of it. And I'm curious to see uh, what kind of people we have watching this video. The 23andMe results for Shakir Inovado are in. A world of DNA discovery is awaiting you. Okay guys, sorry, excuse me, I did something really stupid. I was done with this video and I was editing it. So I was almost done with editing and uh, I was ready to publish the video on YouTube and then I accidentally deleted the screen recording file of um, my DNA results. So that's really stupid, I already know my results, but you guys are still going to see my reaction and you guys of course still don't know my results. So that little mistake of me shouldn't spill the party. Let me log in real quick first. Okay, are you guys ready? Because I am. Let's go to my ancestry composition. Okay, first of all, you can see the regions right here where I'm from. And you can see Europe, of course, as expected. You can see the whole continent of Africa. And you can see a little Middle Eastern part. So yeah, those places, that's where my ancestry is from. But we still don't know the percentages because those are the most important. Okay. I'm 40.8% Northwestern European. That's pretty cool. So right here, Northwestern Europeans are represented by people from as far west as Ireland, as far north as Norway, as far east as Finland, and as far south as France. So this is literally Northwestern Europe. I of course already expected this because my father is Dutch and I've seen a lot of other Dutch people who have like uh, British and Irish and French and German in their ancestry. And I think it really has to do with the migration patterns of Dutch people. So that's quite easily explained. Okay, I think from those 40.8% uh, that is not Northwestern European, 14% is French and German. And this is pretty cool because this is really accurate. You guys need to see this. The Netherlands has 12 administrative regions and we found the strongest evidence of your ancestry in the following eight regions. And the first one that is Gelderland. And that's pretty accurate because I know that the family of my father lives in Gelderland. So it's pretty funny that they just know this only of my DNA, my spit. You can see 
a couple of other regions like North Holland and South Holland. You can see Overijssel, Limburg, Utrecht, North Brabant. So that's pretty cool. I'm 13.3% British and Irish. So as I already said, kind of expected, but it's still cool of course, because I have British and Irish blood. I'm 1.8% uh, Scandinavian. And this actually really surprised me because I didn't know that there was some Scandinavian person in uh, probably my father's family. I don't think this is from um, the African part, if you know what I'm saying. But this is still really cool. Can I call myself a Viking right now? I think I am one. And then we got 11.7% of broadly Northwestern European. And that's basically, I think, the same as Northwestern European. And that was about 40.8% and this is 11.7%. Broadly Northwestern European DNA matches several specific populations. It cannot be assigned to just one. Okay, that explains it. Okay, guys, but it says that I'm 57.4% European, so more European than African. But from the whole, like, uh, Northwestern European part, I'm only 14.8%. So that means... I'm 13.3% Southern European. I don't know, I just knew it. I think that's quite a lot, actually. And I did some more research into this, and this definitely has to do with the wars between Morocco and Spain and Portugal. And basically, a lot of Moroccan people have some Spanish or Southern European into their DNA. But still surprising to me, it's always fun to, to see that. I'm 5.7% Spanish and Portuguese. The genetic landscape of the Iberian Peninsula, I don't know if I'm saying that correct, represented today by the people of Spain and Portugal. Portugal. So 5.7% Spanish and Portuguese. That's that's pretty cool. And then we got 7.5%, so more than the Spanish and Portuguese, 7.5% broadly Southern European. Broadly Southern European DNA matches several specific populations and is difficult to assign to just one. Okay, so that explains the deal. There could be some Italian involved. There could be something different. But I still think uh, the most of it is Spanish and Portuguese. So um, yeah, you know, maybe I should uh, learn some Spanish besides Japanese right now. I'm 3.3% uh, broadly European and I think this is the same, they couldn't really uh, assign it to one specific population. Okay, but right now we're going to move to my North African and Moroccan part. So as I already mentioned, my family is from Casablanca and maybe some nearby regions. Just to clear some things up, I haven't gave them any information about me, where my family used to live. They totally got this information only from my spit, so from my DNA. And the strongest region is of course going to be Casablanca Cetat. But something that I forgot to mention that I heard from my grandma. The grandmother of my grandmother, you got it? Yeah, she basically had blonde hair and uh, really light eyes. So it could be that one of her parents was 100% Spanish or Portuguese. This isn't really special, just broadly Western Asian, North African. And then we got 3.7% Sub-Saharan African right here. But this is pretty exciting because this 3.7% is basically uh, more of the middle part of Africa and the south part of Africa. And as you can see right here, a full 2% um, of Northern Eastern African. So that means Ethiopia, Somalia and Sudan probably. I personally think this sub-Saharan African part needs to come from my grandfather because he was a little bit darker in his skin and my grandmother is really pale. Yeah, what do we got more? We got 0.5% Sudanese. When we are speaking of Sudan, by the way, right now, I think most of you already picked it up, but there are some terrible things going on right now in Sudan. The army is being really aggressive towards protesters. I don't think the whole situation gets enough media attention. You can just Google Sudan and I think you can find a lot of information about that topic. And then I'm 1.1% West African. And all the way down right here we got uh, really small percentages and uh, we got Congolese and Southern East African. Yeah, that's that. And we got 0.5% broadly Sub-Saharan African. And 1.9% is unassigned. I've seen a lot of people on the internet that uh, got the results updated now and then. So that could also be the case with uh, with my results. But I don't expect it to, um, to really drastically um, change any of this. But 1.9% is still unassigned. I'm uh, curious um, what's that going to be. And all the way down here we got um, your ancestry timeline. You most likely had a parent, grandparent or great grandparent who was 100% North African and Arabian. This person was likely born between 1910 and 1970. And the French and German, a person born between 1850 and 1910, 1719 and 1880. But these results have been sick so far. Okay, we also got this other thing that's the Neanderthal ancestry. And, um, and yeah, basically I do not have a lot of variants. I have 229 uh, Neanderthal variants. And I haven't seen anybody else on the internet that has like such low variants as me. As you can see it right here, this is less than 91% of the 23andMe customers. So yeah, I'm totally human, I'm not a Neanderthal. 
This is really extreme. There's somebody who has 397 variants. That's almost two times my variants. That's, wow. Ooh, nice. Uh, I have one variant for less back hair. So you have one Neanderthal variant associated with having less back hair. I think that's uh, pretty accurate. But I think we came to the end of the video. There's not a lot of other things that I can show you. But I hope you guys liked this video, of course. If you did, don't forget to like this video. And if you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. There's going to be a lot of cool content coming up in the next few weeks. And I think it's pretty cool to see my ancestry like this. And I'm going to end the video right now with this question. Is it possible to put pineapple on your pizza?